All right. Hey, y'all. So, um, we're going to continue our discussion. Uh, we kind of talked a little bit about um, half reactions and balancing half reactions. We're going to use half reactions a lot today. Um, so, let's go back to this example and talk about what it means. Now, remember when we get a reaction like this, um, if the charges aren't balanced on the same side, we break them down into their half reactions and balance them, sometimes in acidic and sometimes in basic conditions. Here, um, I have a 2 plus charge over here from a 0 plus a 2 plus here. So this is, is a total of 2 plus, and over here I also have a total of 2 plus. So this sucker is balanced as is. Um, but if I were to break it down into its half reactions, sure, piece of paper back here. If I go to break it down into its half reactions, I'm going to look at each species here. So I would say, okay, zinc, oh, sorry, zinc solid. And then over here, there's an arrow going to Z and two plus. And I would add two electrons to this side. And that's to balance this out because we have a two positive. We need two negatives to cancel out the charge and get an overall zero over here. All right. And then here we have copper two plus because we had the, the ion on this side yielding copper, and we would want to add two electrons over here to balance out that two positive. And so then when we go to add these up, the electrons cancel, and we're left with what we originally had, which is Zn plus Cu2 plus, yielding Zn2 plus, plus Cu. But these have real-world implications, right? The reason that we're doing this <coughs> wasn't just to do some random reactions. It's because... Um, in this chapter, we see how these half reactions actually play in to creating a battery, um, or it's oftentimes called a cell. So the generation of electricity, which occurs when you have this, um, is called elect uh, usually electrochemical electricity or electrochemistry, or <laughs> electrochemical electricity is what I'm going for. And um, when it's a spontaneous reaction, meaning when it wants to happen, um, and it generates electricity, we call this a voltaic cell. And we'll talk about what spontaneous is and what non-spontaneous is here in a little bit. Okay, so this is just kind of a diagram of what this battery would look like. It goes over that this would be the oxidation state, this would be the reduction. So we already knew that. We know zinc's going from zero to a two plus charge. So this part, zinc here, was oxidized, and we know that copper was reduced. It went from two positive to zero. It went down in oxidation state. So this one was oxidized, that one was reduced, and um, that gives us some information. I'm not sure I really like this. I should have erased it, because it just throws everything off, because we can write our own. We don't need them to tell us what the half reactions would be. All right, so essentially, um, Battery works like this, and we have a picture like this later on, but I kind of like this diagram. I think it's really good. Okay, so let's say you have this container of water. I shouldn't have closed it up because that would change the pressure, but let's say you have a container of water, and this one over here is empty. Well, as soon as you open up this bridge between them, this water is going to go from here, and it's going to flow into here, right, and fill up this one. Okay, so we can actually collect electricity right here because of the potential of the water. In other words, this water has a certain amount of potential energy. When you let it go, it's going to go to its lowest energy state, which is pretty much how everything works. For example, I'm holding this pen. When I drop it, it goes to its lowest energy state. So it's going to drop all the way to the wherever it can. And then if I were allowed to roll off the floor, it would. All right, so we can collect electricity here just by the flow of water, and that's how a lot of um, that's how a lot of dams work, um, electrical generators at dams work. But in this case, we're talking about electrons, and it's exactly the same thing. So, for example, here um, you have something zinc, and it's kicking off electrons. In other words, it doesn't want these electrons. And so it pushes them off, pushes them away, and that's why you get this um, electrons here as, as, a, as a product. And those electrons are like, see a zinc, and they go whoosh, over here. And they come over here, and copper's like, I'll take you, thank you. And it'll, it'll actually form 
copper solid over here. But in doing that, when those electrons are moving, it's just like the water moving. We can harness that energy and collect the electricity, collect the electricity that's coming from those electrons moving. So it's no different in terms of concept. Um, we're just collecting something, the flow of something, which is kind of cool. Okay, so that's how a that's how a voltaic cell works. Um, it's called voltaic because we get a certain voltage out of it. All right, then we have this thing called a salt bridge. And what the salt bridge does is it almost kind of like, imagine if you had a siphon. Uh-oh, there go my dogs. They have a siphon that connects from here to here that's just constantly refilling. So this, it goes over here, the siphon refills, and then it allows the battery to continue to go. If we didn't have a salt bridge here, um, there, the power would not continue. We would not have a continuous flow of electricity. Um, instead, the salt bridge allows ions to move back and the electric, electrical charge can continue to go this way. Oh, thanks. There's my dog. Ooh, there's my dog in front of my clean pantry. You guys wanna see it? What? Look at that pantry. Isn't that rad? Aren't you excited for me? I'm excited for me. All right. Just because I talked about it. And that's my dog, Corduroy. I don't know if you've seen him. Okay. So, electrical chemical cell notation um, goes like this, where we put the solid going to the ions that it's sitting in. So we have zinc sitting in zinc 2 plus. My bad. This represents a salt bridge between the two things. Yep. And then we're going to the copper 2 plus and the copper. In other words, it's kind of like this reaction over here. We have zinc going to zinc 2 plus, which is down here. And we have a salt bridge. And then we have copper 2 plus going to copper. And that is what we call um, cell notation. So this right here would represent this battery right there. We don't use it very much, but it is something that you should be aware of. Okay, so the strength of the battery is determined by its potential. In other words, like if you have a big old thing of water connected by a tube, versus a little, well, I don't know why I drew it about the same size, but we'll just fill it with a little less water. Versus just a little bit of water, right? So you got a ton of water over here and just a little bit of water here. You'll get more energy out of this one that's more full, right? Because um, it has a higher potential. There's just more energy that it has when you're holding up. It's like holding up a pen and dropping it on your foot versus holding up a bowling ball and dropping it on your foot. Um, the bowling ball has more potential energy. All right, so the strength of the battery been, can be quantified by this. Um, and yeah, we'll get there here in a second. Um, but essentially, like if you have this battery that we're talking about, you'll get about 100, one or about 1.10 volts. But if you have this battery, you get only 0.62 volts. So all we did was replace the, cop, or the zinc with the knife nickel and by replacing zinc with nickel we lowered the potential nickel had less potential energy in other words nickel didn't want to push those electrons away as much as zinc did zinc really didn't want electrons it had what we call a low reduction potential or a high oxidation potential some interesting things just to think about um, when we're talking about coulombs we're talking about just a unit of charge almost like a magnet um so it's like how, and you'll actually get into this a lot if you get into OCHEM. Um, it's just how much, yeah, how, how attracted things are to each other. So this is an attraction, essentially. It, it's the SI unit by the way, SI unit of charge. It's how attracted something is to something else. So electrons have this much attraction to maybe something that was positively charged. One amp corresponds to that many electrons per second. So oftentimes you'll see things that are in amps. Um, if you have something that has one amp 
you're talking about almost like a velocity, the amount of electrons per second flowing through something. That's a big number, 10 to the 18. Imagine adding 15 zeros to this number right there, and that is how many electrons there are going through a wire at a particular second, which is really, really, really cool. A lot. All right, so different elements have different potentials. We kind of talked about that. For example, that zinc really wanted to push something off, the nickel, and eh, not so much. I think, and by something, I mean the electrons. Different elements have potentials when reduced. This is based on their potential energy and can be used to predict the spontaneity, yeah, of a cell. Okay, so on this next page, which you will be given this table, by the way, You will be given this table, and this is the standard electrode potential. Okay, so these are things that have the potential to be reduced. We're talking about reduction potential. So in other words, these want to take electrons on. These are the, like the coppers that we were just talking about. They want electrons. And the lower you get on this list, the more they don't want electrons. They want to kick them off. They really don't want electrons. So these are more likely to push electrons away and these are more likely to accept electrons. Okay. Um, with that being said, I'm actually gonna go back here, if you don't mind, and fill in a gap that I should have talked about. And that is in the cell notation. What I'm talking about. The thing that is oxidized Over here, we call this the anode. It's the thing that's oxidized. Uh-oh. Now my dog just got a bone. Hey, dude, back here. I'm gonna go close this pantry door. I'll be right back. So this is called the anode. It's where things are oxidized. I kind of remember them because they're the vowels or you could be like A, O, whatever's gonna help you remember it. And then over here, this is called the cathode. That's where things are reduced. Or maybe the thing that wants to be reduced would be a better way to say that. And those, we have the consonants stuck together. So vowels stick together, consonants stick together, okay? The anode the, is in a spontaneous reaction and we'll see cases where they're not spontaneous. In a spontaneous reaction, the anode is gonna be the most negative reduction potential. So if we go back to that chart, and, and hopefully this makes sense because the anode wants to be oxidized. It doesn't want to be reduced. It doesn't want electrons to come to it. It wants to kick electrons away. And that's what it means when we say oxidized. It wants electrons to get away from it. And so when we look at this duty popper over here, what we're saying is down here, this stuff really wants to be oxidized. In other words, it's more likely to be the anode. So the lower you get, the more likely it is to be oxidized. The higher you get, thank goodness puppies, likely to be reduced. Oh my goodness, my one dog got a bone and my other one didn't and life is over. It's over for you two, poor things. Everything is about fairness. <laughs> okay, so the lower we get, the more likely it is to be oxidized. The higher we get, the more likely it is to be reduced. So we can now go back to where we were and finish our discussion here. Okay, those are in spontaneous cells though. Again, we have to be careful about something being spontaneous or not spontaneous, and I'll show you where you might mess up, where I messed up and where I think other people tend to mess up. So 
we'll get there. All right, so for example, in a spontaneous reaction, here we have E of zinc. Um, what this is talking about is the zinc half reaction, where we have zinc plus two electrons going to zinc, and that says negative 0.76, meaning it really doesn't want to be reduced, it prefers to be oxidized. All right, here we have H2, which is kind of kind of in the middle, the zero right here. And it's 2H plus, plus two electrons, yielding H2, and that's a zero. So this one's the one that's more likely to be oxidized because it's lower on the list, and this one wants to be reduced. And that's just if it's a spontaneous reaction. Okay, so in other words, this one wants to be oxidized. This one, this one would be the anode. Remember that A and L go together. And this one wants to be reduced. This would be the cathode. All right, so the more negative the electrode potential, the greater the energy of the electron at that electrode. In other words, the more full the tank. So this one, this one is, has a bunch of water in it. It would be kind of one way to think about it. It has a bunch of electrons it's willing to push off. All right, so we can use this equation um, and we'll use it a lot. So you might as well just memorize it. It's that E cell equals cathode minus anode. So in the, in the full reaction, it's the final minus the initial, essentially states. So cathode minus anode. All right, so <clears throat> in this case, our cathode was equal to 0 0.00. Our anode was negative 0 0.76. So when we take 0 0.00 minus a negative 0 0.76, we get a positive 0 0.76 volts. Positive voltage tells us it's spontaneous. I just realized I skipped over something, but voltage, another word for voltage is joule per coulomb, the amount of energy that you get out of charge. Okay, so a positive voltage tells us that it's spontaneous, so this would be a spontaneous reaction. Let's look at this one. It says, look at H2 and copper. So I give you these, um, but something to point out and, and maybe something that might have thrown somebody off is I, pro I really should have put the half reaction for this copper that I was thinking about, and that is copper um, for the reduction would be this. I was thinking about copper too, but you'll notice on this chart, there are a lot of different coppers. We have copper two, we have copper one. Somebody else showed there's a, I think there's a copper three going to a copper two. So there's lots of coppers on this page. Um, so make sure that it matches with the problem that you're doing. And I'll, I'll show you where that comes into play later. But I really should have written this to help you know that, that I'm talking about that reaction, the 0.34. But thankfully it was given so you knew which one it was. All right, so in a spontaneous reaction, um, the E of copper is, um, is 0.34 and this one's zero. So your question is, in a spontaneous reaction, how would this go? Which one's the cathode and which one's the anode? Well, the lowest one, the smallest number, or the most negative, is always going to be your anode. That makes this one the biggest, is going to be the cathode. And so in a spontaneous reaction, um, that's really what I wanted to put here, the copper is going to be your cathode, and the hydrogen is going to be your anode. So E cell equals E cathode minus E anode. Our cathode, again, was 0 0.34 volts minus 0, 0.00 volts. In other words, 0. 3, 4 volts. All right, so this is in a spontaneous reaction. The reason we know it's spontaneous, again, is this is positive. So we know that it's spontaneous. So we say yay. And it says, what if we set them up in reverse? So like, let's say you mix things up. And I'm sure if you've ever messed with electricity or wires, you've done this at some point or tried to create uh, or make a light bulb light. Um, you've set them up the wrong way. And when you do that, 
if we change them up, we do E cat minus E anode equals our E cell. And we were to say that the cathode was actually hydrogen and the other one was copper we'd get a negative 0.34 volts. So if you flip them and you reverse them, you're gonna get a non-spontaneous reaction. In other words, the reaction won't go, unless you add some outside energy or some outside influence. So this would be non-spawn. All right, there's those, there's this table. We'll be going back and forth between it. So it says use that table to calculate the cell potential for this reaction electrical chemical cell at 25 degrees Celsius. Okay, so the 25 degrees Celsius, again, just tells you that it's at standard. So all of these were done at standard. That's what that little circle means um, under standard conditions. All right, so um, step number one in a case like this is you're going to want to break these down a little bit. Um, by break them down, I mean break them into their half reactions. And part of us balancing reactions the other day was to help us recognize half reactions a little better. I hope that the first one you see is this aluminum. We got aluminum. Ah, I did it again. We got aluminum yielding Al3+, plus, and then we would add three electrons to it. That's going to be our first half reaction. But now we've got all this other stuff. That's okay. I can look at this and just say, ah, oh, this was nit nitrate in acidic conditions. In other words, this was probably nitric acid. And those guys all go together. So NO3, and you don't have to write this down, but just recognize, I want you to just be able to recognize what's part of what in a half reaction. And then, so we should be able to find both of these half reactions on this table. So let's look for aluminum first. All right, I find aluminum way down here. Aluminum plus three electrons yielding aluminum solid, and that's negative 1.66. Okay. And then I look at this one for the nitrate. I know it's up here somewhere. There it is. So we have nitrate plus 4H plus plus three electrons, and that's 0 0.96. Okay, now here's where I tend to mess up and other students tend to mess up. I want you guys to take a second. Um, we've gotten already in the habit of knowing that in a spontaneous reaction that the negative one's going to be the anode and this one's going to be the cathode, and that's not always the case. So we have to look at what actually happened in this reaction. Aluminum went from aluminum to Al3+. It was oxidized. That makes this the anode. So when we do E cathode minus E anode, we need to know which one's which, and we can't just make the assumption that we know. Okay, so our anode was this one, our cathode was this one, and we should add three electrons over here. Um, it's nice just to make sure that they're balanced. And, our cathode had to have been this other one. So this is our cat, and that's our anode. Again, it's not because this was the lowest one, but that's because it was written that way, that this one was oxidized, and therefore this nitrate, this nitrogen specifically, was reduced. And that makes it the cat. All right, so we have 0 0.96 volts minus a negative 1.66 volts. Same thing as adding, what is that, 1.52? Positive 1.52. Whoa, why are there six? Five, two. So this lecture is just pretty early. I mean, 2.62. Two nope, glad I did this. I can do it. One plus something is actually over two. All right, so predicting the spontaneous direction of a, re or maybe I should go back to this and just say, 
All right, so this would be spontaneous. I could ask you that question. Um, but again, going back to this, we had to see which order they're going to determine what was oxidized and what was reduced to figure out which one's the anode and which one's the cathode. We had to go back over to our table um, and that led us all to this point right here. Okay, so predicting the spontaneity of redox reactions. Um, somebody asked what redox is. Yeah, just to clarify, when we say reduction oxidation, just a fast way to say it is redox reactions. So consider these two half reactions. What is the E cell of a spontaneous reaction? So now it wants us to just determine which one's which. All right, here I've got manganese plus two electrons is this, and this nickel is that. All right, I know this is the most negative one, so in a spontaneous reaction, that's gotta be my anode, that's gotta be my cathode, and now I can just put them together. E cell equals E cat minus E an, which would be negative 0 0.23 volts minus a negative 1.18 volts. And I get an answer of 0 0.95, that's right. Cool. All right, so this is spontaneous that because it's positive and we ought to feel okay about that. And we didn't have to do too much to this one. I feel like this one should have been before that one. It's all good. Let's keep going. All right. So if you remember, this is for spontaneous stuff. When things are spontaneous, so far we've realized that when something is spontaneous, the delta G is negative. Right? Um, we know that when something's spontaneous, the E cell is positive. And we also know that K would be greater than 1 because remember that's products of a reactant telling you it's in the reaction, it's creating more products, it's going to the right. Um, and that gives us that too. So all three things are indicators that something is spontaneous. Um, and we can actually relate these three variables to each other, and that's what we're going to do next. So for, let's start with some delta G. Again, if the E is positive, the delta G should be negative, and that's why there's a negative sign right here. So in order to get to this part, we need this. And this should say number of moles of electrons transferred. Number of moles of electrons transferred in the balanced reaction. So F is Faraday's constant, 96.485. So oftentimes they use 96.500, it still throws me. N is the number of moles of electrons, and let's go ahead and figure this out for this particular reaction and see if it's spontaneous or not. Okay, so I see the two half reactions. I see I2, and it's making 2I minus, and I know that I have to add two electrons on this side to balance it out, so two negatives and two negatives. All right, then I have this Br2. I have two Br negative yielding Br2 plus, or Br2 plus two electrons. So now I have two negative and also a two negative over here. So those are my two half reactions. Um, I know that this I is going from a zero to a plus one, so this is oxidized. And I know that this one went from a negative to a zero, so this one I'm just kidding. This went from zero to a negative. If in case you have zero dollars and now you have negative dollars, this is reduced. And this one's oxidized. It went up. It went from a negative to a zero. And I think you agree. If you have negative one dollar and then you have zero dollars, you gained a dollar. Okay. So that makes this the cathode. That makes this the anode. So we know that when we're gonna do E cat minus E in, and that's gonna give us the E cell. And this will tell us if it's spontaneous or not. We gotta to go to those half reactions, and we have to make sure that we get these same half reactions. But that I mean it's I2 and I minus and Br2, or, two B, or Br negative going to Br2. Okay. So going back 
this, which I'm just going to tear this bit off. Okay, so the first one I'm looking for is our cathode. Again, we're looking for I2 and I minus. They're always going to be written in the reduction form. So even if it's flipped around, it doesn't matter. You're still going to use the same thing. So let's see. I'm looking for I minus. There we go. I think I found it right there. Um, and it says that its reduction potential is 0 0.54. That was our cathode. 0 0.54. Now we just have to find our anode. Our anode is Br negative. 2Br negative and Br2. I find it right there. And if I go over here, that's 1.09. Both of those were positive, just to make sure. 0.54. Here I had 1.09. Looking good. Again, we knew this was the cathode. This one was the cathode because it was um, reduced. So let's make sure that happened. We went by to negative. Yep, okay, cool, I'm good with this. So we have 0.54 minus 1.09, and I get negative 0 0.55 volts. All right, so is this spontaneous under standard conditions? The answer is no, it is negative. So it's non-spawn. All right, but if we flip these things around, or we flip this reaction around, it would be spontaneous. Okay, you can predict E cell. Hmm. All right, cool. I'm going to go back to this. I feel like it should say, oh, it does say calculate G, good. So now let's calculate delta G using the reaction or the equation that we have up here. So our delta G is equal to negative N F E cell. And we can just prove to ourselves that this was negative, so therefore this should be positive, right? Our N is the number of moles of electrons. What I mean by that is it's the number of moles of electrons that are canceled out when you add these two half reactions. So I have there and there. Our number is two. We have two moles on each side, and therefore this is negative two. Times Faraday's constant, 9, 6, 4, 8, 5. That's Coulomb per mole of electron. Our E cell is negative 0 0.55 volts, which is also the same unit as joule per coulomb, if you remember. So our coulombs will cancel. This was mole of electron here, that cancels with that, and the only unit we have left is joules. All right, so let's do it. We have two times nine, six, four, eight, five, times 0.55. This negative and this negative canceled out, so I didn't even include them. And I get an answer of 106,134 joules, or, this only had two sig figs in it. So really we're looking at 110,000 joules or 110 kilojoules. So all of these answers would be acceptable. All right, and does it make sense? If this is our free energy, by the way, that's what we're looking for. Hopefully it makes sense because again, this was negative telling us it was non-spontaneous. This is greater than zero telling us that it was also non-spontaneous. All right, so just like we talked about, we can, we can predict, um, we can figure out G from E. We can also figure out K from E. All right, keep in mind, this is gonna be a big difference that this is log of K, and some of the reactions, or some of the equations that you have are ln of K, so be prepared for that. All right, so you can predict the E cell um, given K and vice versa using this. All right, so it says refer to tabulated electron, electrode potentials to calculate K for the oxidation of copper by H plus at 25 degrees Celsius. Okay, right away, I see this dude's oxidized. I see that one's reduced. 
this is my anode, this is my cathode. Now, my half reactions would be Cu, and it's important you do your half reactions just to make sure that you have the N correct. And on the next page, you'll see where that really, really comes into play. So write out your half reactions, because if it's not balanced, it's gonna come back and bite you. So that's my first half reaction. <clears throat> my other one, I have 2H plus, and then I know I have to add two electrons in order to get H2. So right away, I know my N is gonna be two. And that's kind of why we do it. Sometimes they, they don't cancel, and we'll, we'll have an example like that. All right, so our E cell is gonna equal our cathode minus our anode. Um, our cathode is gonna be the hydrogen. And this is where things really matter. Um, so we're gonna, our hydrogen is right here. It's the zero, da, da, da. it's right there. 2H plus plus two electrons yielding H2. So make sure you get the same half reaction. 2H plus plus two electrons yielding H2. Good, so we know that that is 0, 0.00 volts. And again, that's the cathode. Our copper, we have to make sure that we're finding a copper that's copper two plus going to copper with two electrons. Um, Cause again, there's several other ones that you can get. So here I see copper two plus plus two electrons yielding copper solid is 0 0.34. If you grabbed another copper down here or up here, you would have gotten a different answer. My eyes are too bad to even see it. But I get 0. Point, oh, look, I found one. <laughs> like for example, this one, but it's a copper one plus plus one electron yielding copper solid, and that's not what you want. So make sure you grab the right one, and that was 0. 0.34 volts. Right here. So we do our anode, or our cathode, which was 0, 0.00, minus 0 0.34, equaling negative 0 0.34. So is this sucker spontaneous? Hopefully you're saying no, it's non-spawn. So if this is non-spontaneous, we can already predict what K is going to be. I know K's gotta be less than one, meaning there's gonna be more reactants than there are products because it doesn't wanna create products. So I know that this is gonna be less than one, but let's solve for it anyways and make sure that that's the case. We have negative 0 0.34. I'm just gonna plug and chug, that's our E cell, is equal to 0 0.0592 volts. This comes just from R um, and T in Faraday's gas constant or Faraday's gas constant. The R is the gas constant and Faraday's number. Or log. Okay. And we know that this N was actually two mole of electrons. And now we can figure it out. So I'm gonna take the negative 0.34 times two, and then I'm gonna divide 0.0592. In other words, I have negative 11.486 is equal to my log of k. Now remember to get rid of log, you use 10 to the both sides. That will get rid of that. In other words, our k equals 10 to the negative 11.486. So 10 to the second answer. And I get that it's equal to three point, we only had, technically this one, 11, should have only had two sig figs. This should have two sig figs. Zero decimals, really this should just be three times 10 to the negative 12. But that feels better. All right, and that would be our K. Does the K make sense? Hopefully it does, because it's a really small number, right? There's 11 zeros before you get to that three. 
um, if you were to write it out. So a very small number. We know it's non-spontaneous once again. That's fun. All right, hopefully that's helping. One more problem, I think. Sweet. Okay, and that is that easy that E cell at any given time. So much like we've used Q to find um, the free energy at a particular time, we can do the same thing with E cell using this equation. So we can find um, the potential at any given time because it's equal to the standard potential minus this 0.0592 volts over the N times the log of Q, which is how I like to write it. I'm not fancy enough for the other Q. All right, so it says, determine the cell potential for an electrochemical cell based on the following two half reactions. It gives us two half reactions. It tells us that this one's the anode. We don't even have to think about it, and it tells us this is the cathode. So I'm gonna look up these numbers. I know that this copper one, going to copper two plus, plus two electrons, is 0 0.34 volts. I know that this one, the MnO4, let's do it this way, MnO4 plus 4H plus, make sure you get the right MnO4, plus 4H plus, plus three electrons yielding MnO2 and 2H2O, which we have. That one is 1.68. Cool. So I can calculate this E cell standard. Like we always do, we do cat minus n. We are already told the cat, so 1.68 minus 0 0.34. In other words, 1.34 volts. All right, so that calculated that. Our goal, though, is to calculate this. Okay, so this was cool. We got that number right away. But we need to find Q. And do you remember that Q equals products of reactants? We actually don't have the products or the reactants yet because we haven't put these things together. Um, and when, when we're looking at this, we can't just add them up. We have to recognize what is doing what, for example. So at the anode, we have Cu yielding Cu2 plus, plus two electrons, right? In other words, this one is being oxidized. The way this one is, is, well, it's kind of nice that they actually put in the right thing. If you go and look at the, um, Charge of this, this is a plus seven, and this is a plus four. So manganese went down, this was reduced. So it was nice, of them, nice for them not to give us the um, reduction half reactions because we would have had to flip one of them around to match. Thankfully, we have electrons on the left and electrons on the right of this arrow. Okay, so let's keep going. Now we have MnO4 minus, and I'm just ignoring these concentrations. We're gonna come back to that and explain why they are there. So right now I'm ignoring them plus 4H plus, plus three electrons, yielding MnO2, plus 2H2O. If I wanted to add these reactions up, because remember, we need a full reaction to get products over reactants. I couldn't do it the way it is right now, because remember, electrons over here on this side of the arrow have to cancel with electrons on that side of the arrow. And we're not there yet, so what do we have to do? Just like we did in class before, we gotta multiply that by three and multiply that by two, so you end up with the appropriate number of electrons, so then you can cancel things out. When you multiply things, it doesn't change the standard voltage at all, in any way, shape, or form. Um, so it won't change these numbers. It also won't change the concentration, so you don't have to worry about it. All we're figuring out right now is actually the N. Um, because if we can't, we can't say the N's not two, the N's not three, the N will be six, but let's get there. So let's multiply all these by three. So there's my first half reaction. My second one is 
I think I did that right. Two, eight, six, two, four. Cool. And now we add them up. And that will give us our whole reaction that we can use to find Q. So it doesn't matter what order you put these things in, as long as they are on the correct side of the arrow. My six electrons are going to cancel. All right, so hopefully now we're good. It's always helpful to add the charges on both sides and make sure that make sure that you're good. Um, that's a negative right there. So I have eight H pluses. I lost the negative there too. Eight H pluses plus two negatives for a total of positive six. And over here I have three times two positive also for a total of positive six. So positive six and positive six. Looks like this reaction is balanced and correct. So this is our full reaction when we have this, um, this type of cell. Okay, so we've got our full reaction. Again, our objective is to find Q. So we're gonna go ahead and, I'm gonna write the concentrations underneath here. That's 0 0.01 molar for the copper two. Our, manganese, our permanganate is 2.0, and our H plus is 1.0. So these concentrations are for H+, plus. they're not, for example, for H+. Plus. <laughs> it was a bad example because it's the same number, but let me go over here. This concentration of 2 molar isn't for any specific amount of permanganate, it's just the concentration of permanganate, period. So that's why changing these coefficients doesn't change anything. Okay, so we know we've got these concentrations, and now we can figure out our Q. We know Q equals products over reactants. Raise the power of their respective coefficients. So I get 0 0.010 cubed for this one, all divided by 2.0 squared, because I have this two coefficient in front of manganate, permanganate, and then times 1.0 to the eighth, which won't matter because that's just one. All right. So 0.01 cubed divided by 2 squared, which is 4, gives me an answer of 2.5 times 10 to the negative 7, or 6 zeros, and then a 2.5. Okay, that's my Q. Yay! Now we're finally getting somewhere. Now we can plug things in. We know our E cell was this, 1.34. We know our Q is that. We know our n was the number of electrons we canceled, which was six mole of electrons. And now we can just plug and chuck. So our E cell that we're looking for is equal to what it is under standard conditions, which is 1.34 volts, minus 0 0.0592 volts divided by six mole of electrons, times the log of 2.5 times 10 to the negative seven, or that. All right, so 0 0.0592 divided by six times the log, make sure you're using log, not ln, of one, two, three, four, five, six, two, five, I could have just put the second answer in, get that. I'm gonna do 1.34 minus that answer, and I get 1.41 volts. And it should be a number that's generally pretty close. Essentially, it's essentially we were here and now we're here. The reaction got more spontaneous under, than it is under standard conditions. Here it was 1.34, now it's even more positive at 1.41. And somebody is here to see me, and that's perfect timing. Word. All right, y'all. So did we answer that question? Determine the cell potential? We sure did. All right, y'all, have a great week.